In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve a quadratic equation by completing the square. So the first thing we need to do is take the constant term negative 15 and move it from the left side to the right side of the equation. Now, in order to do so, the sign is going to change from negative 15 to positive 15. And we're going to have x squared plus 2x is equal to positive 15. Now, the next thing we need to do is complete the square. So what you need to do is take this number, the middle coefficient, and divide it by 2. And then you're going to square it. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. Thus, we're going to add 1 squared to both sides of the equation. Whatever you do to the left side, you must also do to the right side so that the value on both sides of the, of the equation remain the same. Now, our next step is to factor the trinomial on the left side. And here's a, a quick shortcut that you can use to do so. So whatever variable you see here, just write it. So we have an x. And wherever the sign is in front of the middle term, just you write it. If you see a plus sign, put a plus. If you see a minus sign, write a minus sign. Now, whatever number you see here before you square it, write it here. The square is going to go on the outside. So x squared plus 2x plus 1 can be factored as x plus 1 squared which is the same as x plus 1 times x plus 1. On the right side, we have 15 plus 1, which is 16. So now at this point, in order to get rid of the square, we need to take the square root of both sides. On the left, the square and the square root will cancel, giving us x plus 1. On the right, we need to take the square root of 16, which will give us two answers. The square root of 16 is equal to plus or minus 4. So right now, we have two equations. x plus 1 can be equal to positive 4, or we can write x plus 1 is equal to negative 4. So to solve the first one, we need to subtract 1 from both sides. So 4 minus 1 is 3. We get our first answer, x is equal to 3. For the second one, we need to do the same thing, subtract in 1 from both sides negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. So these are the two answers. x is equal to 3 and x is equal to negative 5. Now how do we know if we have the right answer? Well what we can do is check. We can plug it in to the original equation. Let's start with 3. Replace an x with 3. We're going to get this. 3 squared which is 3 times 3 that's equal to 9. 2 times 3 is 6, and 9 plus 6 is 15. Now, 15 minus 15 is 0, and the left side equals the right side, so this answer is correct. Now, let's check the other answer. So let's replace x with negative 5. Negative 5 squared, which is negative 5 times negative 5, that is equal to positive 25. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, and 25 minus 10 is 15, and we're going to get 0 is equal to 0, so the second answer is indeed correct. Now, for the sake of practice, let's try another example. Try this one. x squared plus 7x plus 12 is equal to 0. So feel free to pause the video, and using the same process that we used in the last example, go ahead and try this problem. So just as before, we're going to move the 12 from the left side to the right side. So it's going to change from positive 12 to negative 12. Now at this point, we can complete the square. So looking at the middle coefficient, we're going to take half of it, and then we're going to square that result. Now whatever you do to the left side, you must also do to the right side. Next, we can factor the trinomial. So we have an x. Let's rewrite that. And then there's a plus sign in front of the 7x. And then the number that we have before we square it is 7 over 2. And the square goes on the outside. On the right side, 7 squared, or 7 times 7, is 49. 2 squared is 4. So what we need to do is we need to add negative 12 plus 49 over 4. So let's put this over 1. 
In order to add those two fractions, we need to get common denominators. So we're going to multiply negative 12 and 1 by 4. So this is going to give us negative 48 over 4, which is still equivalent to 12, by the way, and then plus 49 over 4. Negative 48 plus 49 is equal to positive 1. So we get 1 over 4. So right now we have x plus 7 over 2 squared, and all of that is equal to 1 over 4. Now, what is our next step? Whenever you wish to solve an equation, your goal is to isolate the x variable. So we need to get it by itself. To do that, we need to get rid of the square. And so we have to take the square root of both sides of the equation. The square and the square root will cancel. So on the left, we're going to get x plus 7 over 2. On the right, we're taking the square root of a number. So it's going to be plus or minus. The square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. So now we can write two equations, which I'm going to put here. The first one is going to be x plus 7 over 2 is equal to positive 1 half. And the second one, x plus 7 over 2 is equal to negative 1 half. So to get x by itself, we need to move the 7 over 2 from the left side to the right side. So it's going to change from positive 7 over 2 to negative 7 over 2. Anytime you move a number from one side of the equation to the other side, it's going to change sign. So we're going to have x is equal to 1 over 2 minus 7 over 2. And for the other one, x is equal to negative 1 over 2 minus 7 over 2. So 1 minus 7 is negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So we get our first answer, x is equal to negative 3. For the second one, negative 1 minus 7 is negative 8. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. So the second answer is x is equal to negative 4. So that's it for this particular quadratic equation. That's how you can solve it. Now, let's try a harder example. So this time, the leading coefficient is not 1, but it's a 2. And so this is going to take a little longer to solve this problem. If you want to give it a shot, feel free to pause the video and work on it. By the way, for those of you who want more examples on solving quadratic equations by using the completing the square method, check out the links in the description section below of this video after you finish watching this one because I'm going to post some other videos that have more example problems that you could work on. So let's continue with this one. First, as always, we're going to move the 3 from the left side to the right side. And so we're going to have 2x squared minus 7x, leave a space, equal to negative 3. Now, what do you think we need to do next at this point? Here's what we shouldn't do. We shouldn't complete the square yet. We shouldn't divide this by 2. First, we need to deal with this leading coefficient. So what we need to do is factor out the 2. Factoring out 2 from 2x squared gives us x squared. But how do you factor out a 2 from an odd number? What you do is just divide it by 2. So this becomes negative 7 over 2. Because 2 times negative 7 over 2 is negative 7. Now we're going to leave a space and then put negative 3. At this point, we want to complete the square inside of the parentheses, not outside of it. To do that, we need to take half of 7 over 2. But what is half of 7 over 2? To find the answer, multiply 7 over 2 by 1 half. And so you get 7 over 4. Thus, to divide 7 over 2 by 2, just multiply the denominator by 2. So we're going to get plus 7 over 4. And then once you take half of this number, don't forget to square it. And whatever you do to the left side, you must also do to the right side. But you need to do more than just add 7 over 4 squared, because this number is multiplied by 2. So you need to put a 2 in front of it in order for the value of both sides of the equation to remain the same. 
So now let's factor the trinomial. So we have an x variable. There's a negative sign in front of the middle coefficient. And then the number that we see before we square it, we're going to put it here, 7 over 4. And then the square goes on top. 7 squared is 49. 4 squared is 16. So that's what we now have. Now, what is 2 times 49 over 16? What you could do is divide it backwards. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So it becomes plus 49 over 8. Now we need to add 49 over 8 to negative 3. So let's put this over 1. And we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by 8 to get common denominators. So we have 2 times x minus 7 over 4 squared. Negative 3 times 8, that's negative 24. And negative 24 plus 49, or in reverse, you could say 49 minus 24. And that's equal to 25. Now, our next step is to divide by 2, which is the same as multiplying both sides by a half. And let's do it that way because of the fraction on the right side. On the left, the 2's will cancel, leaving behind x minus 7 over 4 squared. On the right side, 8 times 2 is 16. So now we have two perfect squares. So taking the square root of both sides, we're going to get x minus 7 over 4 is equal to plus or minus. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 16 is 4. So now we can write two equations. x minus 7 over 4 is equal to positive 5 over 4. And it's also equal to negative 5 over 4. So now let's move the negative 7 over 4 to the other side, where it's going to become positive 7 over 4. So x is 5 over 4 plus 7 over 4. And it can also be negative 5 over 4 plus 7 over 4. 5 plus 7 is 12. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. So this gives us the first answer, x is equal to positive 3. For the second one, we have negative 5 plus 7, which is 2. 2 over 4 reduces to 1 half. And so these are the two answers to this particular quadratic equation. So now you know how to solve quadratic equations by completing the square.